video we're going to talk about factoring. Today I have four examples for you. In the first example, it says factor 4x plus 3x squared. So remember, factoring means to take a problem and to break it down into multiple things that can be multiplied to make that. So for example, can I take this example, 4x plus 3x squared, and can I break it into things that multiply to make 4x plus 3x squared? Now sometimes factoring will make two things, two factors. Sometimes it'll make more, okay? In this question, uh, when we go to factor it, we realize that uh, both terms have something in common, right? They both have an x in common. This is called greatest common factor factoring. And you should always try to do this first. Whenever you're told to factor, always check to see if there's anything in common in both terms or all terms, if it's more than two terms. So four and three, there's nothing in common there. We can't factor anything out there. But the greatest common factor in both of these letter-wise is x. So if I put an x inside the first parentheses, basically what I'm doing is I'm saying that both of them have an x in common. If I put the x here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend, oh, if this were distributed back into this second parentheses, what would make 4x? And what would make 3x squared? So x times what is 4x? The answer to that is 4. And x times what is 3x squared? The answer to that is 3x. So the answer to the question number one here, when we are asked to factor it, is that. And sometimes when you do greatest common factor factoring, you'll see that they don't put parentheses around the first term because you don't need the parentheses when it's just a single term like that, right? Question two is also a greatest common factor question. Remember, you should always try that first before you try any other factoring method. And right away, you'll notice that both of these terms have x's and y's. So I know my greatest common factor is going to involve x's and y's. Now, how many x's can I take from both of these terms? This has x squared. This only has x. So the most I can take from both of them is x. Same with this. One y here and three y's here. I can't take more than one y. And then I'll put my parentheses. What do I need to multiply x y by to make x squared y to the third? Yeah, if I have an invisible one x here, I need to have one more x, right? If I have an invisible one exponent, I need one more to get to two. And that's why we're going to put an x there. And I have one y, but I need three y. So that must mean I need two more y's to make the first term, right? If we're envisioning a distributive property, that times that would make that. <clears throat> now, what do we do here when this <clears throat> is exactly what the second term is? I can't just leave an empty space here. If I put a plus zero or a minus zero here, that would... Um, when I distribute it, that would cancel it out, right? Multiplying by zero gets rid of stuff. So what would I have to put here so that we make an x minus y when we're multiplying? The answer to that is a one, right? X times y times negative one would make negative xy. So sometimes when you're doing greatest common factor factoring, you end up taking everything you need. And when that happens in its place, you need to put a one, or in this case, a minus one. All right, number three is not greatest common factor factoring. Right away, I notice that this is only a four. There's no x's, there's no y's. There's nothing in common letter-wise I can take from both of them. And this one doesn't have any numbers here, so there's no number I can factor out. So we have to go into our bag of tricks for other factoring methods. Let's try the second method, which is uh, difference of two squares factor. And you use this method when you are given two terms with a minus sign, that's why it's called difference of two squares, and every single thing involved is a perfect square. Four is definitely a perfect square, right? Because two squared is four. 
Both of these, you might not know it, but both of these are perfect squares as well. If a letter has an even exponent, it's a perfect square because I can multiply something by itself to get x to the six. So a uh, difference of two squares, you're going to make two parentheses and you're going to put a plus and a minus in the middle. And then in the back of both of them, you're going to do the square root of four, which is two. And you're going to write it once in each because two times two is four. And then in the fronts, we're going to write the square root of that. So basically, if I have six x's I need, I need to put half of them in each group. So I'm going to put x to the third in both groups, and I'm going to put y to the second in both groups. So our answer to this question is x to the third, y to the second, plus 2, x to the third, y to the second, minus 2. And if you don't believe me that this factors, or this, uh, this multiplies to be that, let's actually multiply it. If we do box method on this, and we do x to the third, y to the second, x to the third, y to the second, positive 2, negative 2, when I go to multiply all this, we will get this original problem here. Because when I multiply those, I get x to the sixth, y to the fourth. Remember, when you multiply, you add exponents. When I multiply those, I get negative 2x to the third, y to the second. Same thing here, negative 2, actually that's positive, 2x to the third, y to the second, and that one's going to be negative 4. And when I go to combine like terms, since this is positive and this is negative, those two are opposites and we don't have to worry about them. Hey, look at that. This combines like terms to be x to the sixth, y to the fourth, minus 4, which was our original question. We have one more problem to do today, and that's one more type of factoring. This is not greatest common factor because there's no letter or number in common in all of these. This is not a difference of two squares because there's not two things that are perfect squares. This is called trinomial factoring. And trinomial factoring, you end up making two parentheses. And we ask ourselves, let's make a box here. We ask ourselves, how do we make a negative 90 and how do we make an x squared? And we also need to worry about these two terms adding up to be a positive 1. Well, this part's easy. I know this is x and x. There's no way to multiply to get x and x, or to get x squared without x and x. Negative 90, there's a few ways to multiply to get negative 90, like, I don't know, negative 1 and 90, or 1 and negative 90, or negative 2 and 45, or 2 and negative 45. But if I need these two things here to add up to be 1, I must need the two numbers I picked to be really close together. So I'm going to skip all the way down to 9 and 10, and I'll make that one negative, or 9 and negative 10. One of these is our answer, right? Those are one apart. I need them to be one apart, and I need there to be more positives. So I want to pick this one, 10 and negative 9, 10 and negative 9. So if I fill those in and I combine like terms, I'll get x squared plus 1x equals negative 9, or minus 90. That's exactly what our problem is. So our factors here are x plus 10 and x minus 9. Sometimes you'll hear people say a shortcut for this, which is, I need two numbers that multiply to negative 90 that add up to positive 1. That's basically the process we just did. I just did it a little longer. So trinomial factoring, you look at this number and decide what two numbers do I need that multiply to negative 90 that add up to positive 1. And in this case, the answer to that question was positive 10 and negative 9. Now that shortcut method that that 92 numbers method, that only works when a, when this number in front of x squared is equal to 1. If there's another number in front of the x squared, this method of shortcut asking yourself that question doesn't always work as easily as, as it just did. So uh, keep that in mind if you have a number there. We'll, uh, there'll be another video that talks about that. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.